So I wanted to go over the fancy list view demo because it got a little rushed at the end of class and understanding it is important for the flipped classroom. So I also cleaned up the code from class a little bit to make it a little bit easier to follow. So if you recall, this is our fancy list demo. And our fancy list demo has this data structure with a name and a rating, and it uses it to populate rows in a list view that have a name and a picture. The picture is chosen based on the rating. The important, oops, nope. The important point is the adapter. The adapter is set here. Fancy list view adapter is allocated here. The list view adapter extends an array adapter with a type parameter of name and rating. Um, and I will explain view holder uh, at the end, and that will not be on the in the flipped classroom. So again, recall in the constructor, we do the standard constructor thing, which is calling the superclasses constructor. That's what this is. And then we also uh, keep a reference to the layout inflator object, which we get through this call layout inflator dot from, and we pass it get context. Okay. Now, now for the get view operation, this is the most important operation that takes a position and returns a view. I now have three levels. The first level is inefficient, but correct. Uh, however, if you do it this way in your flipped classroom, you will get points off because it's it's too inefficient. You're never supposed to do a. Uh, list view like this. And what I'm doing is I'm getting called with a position, a convert view, and my parent. Every time I get called, I'm inflating a new view, and then I'm calling uh, find view by ID to fill in that view. Find view, make view. Find view, make view is up here position and a view, and we just do our, our sort of standard thing. In order to get the name and rating, we actually have to call get item. That's going to be uh, inherited from array adapter, and that's a pretty simple call. Right? So we're basically indexing the array adapter with the position, and we're going to get back a name and rating. That's sort of, uh, if you just think of the array adapter as an array, that's indexing the array. Then once we have that, we can find view by ID to get the text part of the row that we're trying to fill in. We set that to the name, and we find view by ID the pick part, and we set that to one of our drawable resources. And we're done. Right, the, um, we're finding the text view in the view that was passed in. We're finding the image view in the view that was passed in. And then we're, re we're returning a reference to the view that was passed in. Okay, so the first level, we always inflate, and then we call find view. The second level, this is what you have to do, because this is the most important optimization. If convert view is, is null, inflate. Otherwise, just uh, otherwise we're going to reuse convert view, and we're going to fill in the view by using find view by ID. So in this case, the system is passing us an old view, and if I passed you an old view in here, everything is still going to work out because I look up new data 
and then I just get the text view and I put in the new data and I grab the image view and I put in the new data. So everything is fine even if view already had previous values because I don't read those values, I just overwrite them. So far so good. Now the final level that we did not get to talk about in class and I'll just throw it on here quickly is the idea of a view holder. And what the view holder does is it allows us to eliminate most of these find view by ID calls. So the find view by ID calls come up here when we are resetting the view. The idea of a view holder is it's an auxiliary class that I'm going to associate with a view using this get tag and set tag routines. <clears throat> because uh, the view holder is going to hold um, my um, information, I can then, the sorry, it's going to hold the, the views, <laughs> it's a view holder. I don't need to call find view by ID in the common case, just like I don't have to inflate in the common case. So let's, let's, let's take a look at this. Sorry. Let's take a look at this from, from, from the beginning. Here's our view holder object and it's holding two views because there are two views that we're going to need to fill in for each row. It's holding the text view and the image view. Okay. Now, just like, um, the optimization when convert view is null, we have to call the inflator. When convert view is null, we actually have to initialize the view holder. And we basically have to pass it in the internal views for the given external view. This is the text part of the row and this is the image part of the row. So this is a new object and then we're just going to sort of shove this object into this view. That means when you, uh, when you, when the um, framework calls me back the next time, I can get the tag, and it's going to have these v this view holder object. This view holder object is how I'm going to find the text view and the image view. I don't need to find view by ID. I already did that. I've got a reference that's being held in the view holder object. So I just grab the view holder object, I grab the text view part of it, and I jam in my new data. Then I grab the image view part of it, I jam in my new data. I don't need to call find view by ID because I have the view being held for me in the view holder object, which is being stored as auxiliary data in the view object. Okay. If you understand that, great. If not, we're going to go, to, go over it in class. And regardless, it's not going to be on the Fluff Classroom tomorrow. Okay. So thanks for listening. Bye.